All right. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us this morning. Before I turn it over to Paul, just a couple quick things to go over for the webinar. Um, if everyone can remain on mute uh, during Paul's presentation, that would be much appreciated, just so there isn't any background noise. Um, you, the cameras are completely optional. Um, if you want to keep them on or not, uh, that's up, totally up to you. If you have any questions that pop up during the presentation, please feel free to put those into the chat feature. Uh, otherwise, you can hold them until the end of the presentation um, where we'll do a little Q&A. There's one button on your screen I'd like you all to avoid hitting. It's, uh, it's a little rectangle with an up arrow. Uh, it says present screen. Please do not click that as that will interrupt Paul's presentation. Uh, if you have any technical difficulties, please put those issues into the chat and I'll do my best to help you through those. Please be aware that most of the time those issues stem from your own internet connection. Uh, I don't, oh yeah, there is one person who's dialed in today via telephone. If you did dial in, please send me an email at mfrey at pgahq.com. Uh, that way we can make sure you get your PDR credits for this morning. Lastly, we are recording the webinar, um, so if you ever need to refer back to it or share it with some of your colleagues that aren't able to make it uh, this morning, um, that'll be fine. It'll be up on our YouTube uh, channel, hopefully later today. Um, so um, with that, I'll turn it over to Mr. Paul Fredericks. Uh, Paul is a uh, member benefits lead for the PGA of America, and he was nice enough to, uh, to spend his morning with us to tell us a little bit about the Deferred Compensation Program. Thanks, Paul. Perfect. Uh, thank you for the introduction, Matt. Um, so like you were saying, my name is Paul Fredericks. I'm the member benefits lead um, here out at the PGA HQ in Frisco, Texas. I'm really excited to um, talk about deferred compensation with you guys, um, just because it's something that's been on the PGA's radar for a long time. We try to get this out to you guys, and we finally got approval from the IRS this past year. Um, so we're excited that this is officially going to launch on uh, April 1st. Um, so without further ado, I'll go ahead and, uh, share my screen and we'll go over a uh, presentation it should take no more than 15 or 20 minutes. And then I'll leave the rest for any Q and a you guys may have. All right, so just a, a high level overview uh, about deferred compensation or what, what our goal is behind it. Uh, so we wanted to be able to reasonably compensate our members for performing services that uh, specifically advance our purpose for growing the game of golf. So working with the IRS, uh, we created a plan whereby members that participate in uh, several activities that meet uh, specific performance objectives can earn a contribution towards a de deferred compensation plan um, via a point system. Um, so this whole plan is designed uh, to provide supplemental retirement income for our members once they reach the age of 65. Um, members can register now and start earning points on April 1st of this year. Um, how this is going to work plan year wise, it'll be um, April 1st to March 31st every year for each plan year. So that's consistent with our fiscal year. Um, eligibility for the plan. So all PGA members in good standing that are working in the US. Um, class F members will not be eligible to earn points while in class F status. Um, if you move out of class F status, you will then be able to, to earn points. So keep that in mind. Also, a PGA associates and university students are not eligible for uh, the plan at this time either. So what is deferred compensation? So um, Essentially, it's just compensation that is set aside to be paid out at a later date. So this can come in a variety of different forms, um, usually as retirement plans, pension plans, um, or stock option plans. Uh, the benefits that are associated with our deferred compensation plan um, is tax deferred growth, uh, the ability to choose uh, your investment allocation from a wide variety of different funds, um, supplement your future retirement income. So this is the, the, the main goal uh, behind the whole program itself. And the contributions are going to be coming directly from the PGA. So this is not coming out of your pocket. I'm not going to affect your paycheck in any way. All the contributions are coming directly from us. 
So a little bit more about uh, how contributions and withdrawals are going to work within the plan itself. Uh, so like I stated, uh, contributions are made only by the PGA, so there'll be no outside participant contributions. Um, currently, right now, the maximum amount an eligible member could potentially receive um, this plan year is $1,500. So that amount was set by the IRS, and that can change from year to year. We expect that amount to increase roughly 3% each year. Um, but like I said, each year that's going to be determined by the IRS themselves. Um, the actual dollar amount received by a member will be dependent on a couple of different factors. So this will uh, include total points earned for that, that plan year, which we'll kind of get to how that works in a little bit. Uh, total participation in the plan, so the overall members that participate and the, the members that are, are eligible and reach that point threshold. And then the overall contribution by the PGA for that specific plan year. As far as how withdrawals and distributions are going to work, so the distribution age for this plan is 65 years old. So funds cannot be withdrawn before 65. Um, however, there will be limited circumstances where a hardship withdrawal may be available. Um, members will receive uh, payments um, paid out over a 10-year uh, window in monthly installments. So this will be known as a distribution period. Uh, no tax will be withheld on the distributions. Obviously, any tax-related questions, consult with a tax professional there. And then loans and rollovers will not be permitted within the plan as well. All right, so um, real quick, I just want to talk about the power of compound interest. So I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with the concept, uh, but for those who aren't, just want go over a quick high level overview just to kind of show what this can provide you whether you're 30 years away from retirement or you know even five to ten years away from retirement so essentially what compound interest is is um, earning interest on both the principal investment and your accumulated interest over time um, you're earning interest on your interest you're letting your money go to work for you so the next three figures i'm going to show here are going to show at both a 10 20 and 30-year hypothetical uh, return of what receiving the potential 1500 maximum each year would look like. Um, keep in mind that these are all um, hypothetical charts based on the 6% annual rate of return and that other investment decisions could affect these um, returns as well. But if you look at a 10-year uh, projection, um, you're looking at a roughly an increase in, in value from your base principal value of uh, just over 33% so that 16,500 um, equates a little bit more than $22,000. However, if we look 20 and 30 years down the road, you will start to really see that uh, future value um, chart in red really start to skyrocket there. So that 20 year value, um, it almost doubles your initial principal value at just under $60,000. And for 30 years, you almost triple and coming in just under $130,000. So what $1,500 may not seem a lot for a year, but over time, you can see that this can really make a, a meaningful impact and, and help supplement you and, and live a little bit more comfortable retirement. So the point system. Um, point system is gonna be key with this plan. So um, how this works, so members will earn points uh, towards the plan after the completion of uh, certain specified activities. So uh, each year a member must earn a minimum of 200 points to qualify to be able to re receive a contribution of any kind. Um, one thing we do want to kind of emphasize is just because you reach 200 points, that doesn't mean you're guaranteed that maximum amount for that year. It just means you're eligible to receive some sort of contribution. Um, if a member does not reach that threshold those points will not be forfeited so for example if you get 150 points in a plan year and don't fully get up to 200 you can't carry those over to the following year so those those will be forfeited for that year um, how the reporting process works for these points so members will be able to keep track of their points on pga.org or through the new uh, pga member app that will be released uh, next week um, uh, just in time for that April 1st uh, launch date. So the app is going to be the, the key resource and the quickest and easiest way to report your points. Um, we'll touch on it uh, quickly um, in the next couple of slides as well. 
but essentially it just gives you the option to select your activity that you completed, your level of involvement, type in a little description, submit it, and then it will um, require what we call a, a, a multi-pronged reporting model. So self-attestation by you and then the attestation of another PGA professional. Um, so they'll get an email um, being notified that they need to verify points. Once those points are verified by that other member, you will get uh, credited for that activity immediately. And then a list of uh, eligible activities and their assigned point value will be available on the PGA.org website. I'm sure some of you may have already seen it, and we'll touch on this um, on the next uh, two slides as well. Um, sorry if the font's a little small, it's kind of hard to kind of spread out 16 activities over, over two slides here. But um, as you can see, the, the, the main um, activities we're looking at here, we've got PGA Junior League that we know a lot of members are involved with, uh, PGA Family Golf, um, Inclusive Golf Communities, um, Diversity, Equality, and Inclusion, and just to name a few. You'll notice as well that some activities um, will allow for different percentages of, of, of a lot of point value. So depending on your level of involvement, for example, at PGA Junior League, you can um, get 50% or 25% or um, as a team coach, whereas, for instance, PGA Family Golf, the only option for that would be 100% of the point value, so full participation. So even if you're not able to participate in an activity in a full capacity, a lot of these activities still allow you to get points just by um, contributing in, in some, some way, shape, or form. Um, so we think with that, it allows you to have some flexibility with that and uh, still be able to accrue points uh, to at least reaching that 200 point uh, minimum threshold there. So um, this briefly is just showing what the new uh, PGA member app is going to look like. Um, you'll notice it's, you know, um, Pretty straightforward and, and, and pretty user friendly. Um, there'll be some videos sent out about how the functionality of, of it works. Um, you'll be able to register deferred for deferred compensation on the app if you haven't done so already. Obviously, you'll be able to um, select your activity and submit those activities for points there. There will also be more features built into the app over time as well, so it won't just be deferred comp related. Um, so more information on the app will be, will be sent out as well once that information becomes available. Um, but it's going to be a great tool, and it's going to be built out over time to where it'll have a lot of different functionality to, to benefit you in, in multiple ways. So I'm going to touch on some FAQs that we've gotten um, really for the past uh, couple of months. And I know uh, Matt did submit a couple of questions, and I think some of the questions that were submitted actually are kind of um, inadvertently touched on and, and with some of our Q&As here, but I'll be happy to answer more questions after the fact. So um, how will the funds I earn be administered? So uh, Corbridge Financial will be administering this plan um, as well. So for those of you who have GRP accounts, uh, they manage, manage GRP as well. But uh, it should be noted that even if you do have a GRP account, you will have to register separately for deferred compensation you'll be able to see both plans um, on your Corbridge login um, once the initial deposit for um, deferred compensation goes in, which won't be until, you know, essentially next summer. Um, but you'll be able to, to log into one spot and see both plans. So it makes that a lot easier for you to keep everything under, you know, one roof, essentially. Um, when and how can I enroll? Um, so enrollment began at the PGA show uh, this January, but Obviously, in open enrollment is, is available now, so you can do it online, or you can wait until the app comes out and register um, to the app as well. Um, so does this uh, plan um, impact the maximum amount that I can cont contribute to my 401k or any other retirement accounts? So this plan will have no effect on contributions you make to any sort of other retirement accounts, 401k, IRA, 403b, anything like that. Um, so this is completely separate, so that won't have any effect on, uh, on those plans that you may have. Uh, so how does uh, deferred compensation relate to Golf Retirement Plus? Um, so GRP will continue uh, as a separately managed program 
So eligible members will be able to participate in both GRP and deferred compensation. We've got some questions that, um, will this be replacing GRP? No, it's not replacing GRP. You'll still be able to take advantage of both as long as you're eligible for both. And then uh, when will I receive the funds that I earn? So we expect um, the contributions to go into those respective accounts around 120 days following the conclusion of that uh, program year. Um, so for example, for this first plan year, we expect the contributions to go in around July to August of 2024. Um, reason for that kind of delay period is that we do allow up to 60 days after a completion of an activity. Um, for you to actually submit it for point. So say you're submitting a, an activity at the very end of the fiscal year for this first year, um, it will give you that 60 day buffer to get that submitted. And then we do have to go through an audit on our end um, and then Corbridge has to do their thing on their end as well before the funds can actually be uh, deposited there. So that's why there's a, that uh, time frame. And then, um, this last one here is probably the one uh, question we've gotten the most. So will there be changes to the point system um, or the plan in general in the coming years? Um, short answer is, is yes. So with this being a new program, obviously there's gonna be some some hiccups along the way, um, just with, with, with feedback on how the, the points work and how uh, deposits may or may not work. Um, but we'll uh, continue to, to take feedback and, and annually we will evaluate the current point structure in the activity structure to see, you know, what activities seem to, you know, be the most common, which ones aren't, you know, taken advantage of the most, and what ones could be added subtract. Um, keep in mind with a lot of these activities, um, there is there was an approval process, approval process that we had to go through with outside counsel and the IRS, um, so they had to approve the activities that are listed currently. So there, was, there were a lot of other activities where we wanted to add. They just, they just weren't, unfortunately, be able to approve, at least for this year. Um, so we do see the uh, point system and the activity structure changing probably within the next, you know, two, three, four years to kind of like iron out all the, all the issues that we, we may run into there. Um, so with that, I'll kind of open it up um, to any sort of Q&A that, that Matt or anyone else may have. Um, this last slide, um, I'll leave this up here. Um, this QR code, if you haven't signed up for Deferred Comp already, you can simply scan this QR code. It'll take you to our Deferred Comp page on pga.org and you can sign up there. It literally takes no more than three or five minutes. It's pretty easy and straightforward. You'll get an email confirmation once, once it's done and uh, it'll set you up um, ready to go for, for that April 1st launch date. So. We're really excited for this. Uh, we think it's going to be a great benefit for all of our members and not only help to um, retain talent, but to attract new talent as well. So um, with that, I'll uh, leave it up to Matt and uh, anyone else that may have uh, questions. Thanks, Paul. Um, if anyone has any questions, feel free to unmute yourself. Paul, I have I have one or two that just popped up as uh, as you were speaking. Um, can you can you talk a little bit about the um, early on in your presentation? You mentioned having the ability to choose the investment allocation. Can you go into any more details about that and explain what that might look like? Yeah, absolutely. So um, as far as allocations go, um, you'll have the ability to choose from thirty different mutual or over 30 different mutual fund options. The default option will be a, um, a target date retirement fund, which will be de defaulted based off your age. So that's pretty common for most retirement plans. Um, so the initial deposit will go into the default target date fund. Uh, but once that deposit hits, you'll be able to then uh, move and exchange out of that fund and you can move it into any one of the available options uh, within the plan. Um, or you can move it into multiple different funds. So if you wanna have a little more hands-on um, with your portfolio, as far as how you wanna diversify, you can move it into three or four different funds if you want, or if you just wanna leave it in the default, you can do that too. Um, so, so so that will be available. Unfortunately, we don't have the the full official list. We've got a, pre a preliminary list of what the investments are gonna look like, uh, but we don't have a um, locked-in fund in uh, less from Corbridge at this point. Got it, thank you. 
Um, Jason asked if uh, if they can set up beneficiaries for the deferred compensation and the percentage on the breakout. Yes, so it, you will be able to set up beneficiaries there. Um, that will be done through the Corbridge uh, website uh, once the um, plan shows up there. So all of that, like as far as like beneficiaries, um, I'm sorry, investment allocation, um, uh, stuff of that nature, even like viewing statements, all going to be done through Corebridge. So uh, once that um, initial deposit goes in, you have your funds set up there. You'll be able to, um, you know, set the beneficiaries how, up however you wish. Perfect. Um, is there a way or a system set up, maybe through the app that'll launch, um, where members might? be able to suggest potential points? I, I know it's going to be ultimately up to the IRS, but um, is there a way they can ask the PGA to, to put something in front of the IRS? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, great question. I'm glad that was brought up because um, we've already gotten some suggestions there. Um, the best way to do that is actually going to be um, emailing us. We have a specific deferred compensation um, email address. Um, that you can send that to. It's simply deferred compensation at pgahq.com. And I can uh, type it out in the chat as well. That way everyone can, you know, just copy and paste. Um, but that's going to be sent to our team. Um, so when, when we get an email, I get, I get to look at it. Um, Christy gets to look at it and a handful of other members um, will get that. And then that way we can, we, we've essentially already kind of accumulated a list of suggested um, activities. So um, that's going to be the best way to do it. Um, like I said, we've probably gotten at least a dozen suggestions. And a lot of them, I, I think that we may be able to get some. Um, we know that we suggested with the initial plan year and they got turned down. So, um, you know, we'll, we, we, we'll, we want to do our best to be able to provide as many activities that are you know, suitable for all members here, but like I said, there's a pretty extensive approval process that they, these go through. So, um, but we're, so we're definitely open to suggestions and I'll put the, uh, the email address in the chat that way everyone can have it. Hey, Paul, Jeff Surrett. Thanks so much for uh, doing this, man. I really appreciate it. Um, mm -hmm. uh, a couple quick things, I guess the genesis of all this, you know, from the, from the build out, um, for, it was my understanding that, you know, the uh, the points and the programs awarded were really built around the idea that they had to be true to our mission of growing the game. Is that correct? How the, the genesis of that? Yeah, the, 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 the main goal behind this was to, you know, compensate you guys for, for growing the game of golf and, and going outside of, you know, above and beyond to, to help do that. So Right. Um, and then, um, so as a section, just for the folks on the call, as a section, we were able to submit I believe it was five um, five programs uh, to be considered um, to be uh, to be able to earn points uh, through the program, which which we did submit. Do you know what the timeline is on those being approved, Paul? Yeah, so we actually had I would say for because those are specifically for like diversity, equality, and inclusive golf activities. Mm -hmm. I believe we had over fifty submissions okay. for that across the board. So we got a lot of good feedback and a lot of good suggestions there. We're still um, in the process of reviewing those. Um, I know a handful um, we weren't able to really proceed with just because there were some that we already presented to the IRS and, and they axed uh, right off the bat. Um, but we foresee us getting a list out to everybody of ones that are approved um, no later than the 30th or 31st of March. So right before the deadline. So, okay. um, I think we're meeting, um, early next week to kind of do like a final review. Um, what I can say is don't expect a whole lot of change, at least for this plan year, just because, sure. we, you know, pretty much the only thing we could really change is maybe how we word some of the activities that we currently have as far as adding like new activities, it's going to be really tough. Um, but for, you know, the following plan year or years after that, I think that's where the the changes is, are you, you're really going to see there. Right. Um, but I would say by the end of, end of March, we'll, we'll we'll have a list of <clears throat> what we were able to approve, and then that way you guys have that for this year. Okay. And then as far as timing and earning points, right? So, 
um, you know, let's say for argument's sake, you know, we had a program, you know, in April and then somebody somebody forgot to sign up for deferred comp, you know, and they didn't sign up for deferred comp till June or July, they can still retain, they can still go get those points, right, from that program in April or, or, or is that the matchup? So they have 60 days from the end of that activity okay. to um, submit it. So if they sign up for deferred comp and they waited till, you know, day 55, they can still submit it as long as it's okay. within that. If they complete an activity in April and they wait till October, to you know, submit for it. Unfortunately, it's, it's not going to count. Okay. I can't backdate it that far. Okay. So. All right. No worries. Thanks. Just wanted to make sure we're clear with everybody. Yeah. Thanks, Bud. Appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I had one more question. Um, you might have mentioned it. I might have missed it. Um, and if that's the case, I apologize. But did you say a time frame when you were um, anticipating the member app to launch? Yeah. So the member app we foresee to be. Um, available for download and use on April 1st. Awesome. Um, barring any, just because the app still has to be approved by both the Apple and Android App Store. Um, and both of those have different time frames as to when they approve the apps. And this is uh, from our tech team here. We had a, a meeting with them yesterday. Um, they foresee it to be available on April 1st. So, you know, I would go ahead and, and prepare like it is. If for some reason it's not, I'm sure we'll send out a communication saying that, hey, it's a day or two behind. But um, yeah, that app should be available by April 1st. You can download it. And then, you know, if you if you guys are hosting any activities that, that weekend or, or later that week, you can start, you know, recording and submitting points, you know, as soon as it's available. Great. Does anyone else have any other questions for Paul? Going once, going twice. Okay. Well, Paul, thank you so much for your time. Um, if uh, if any other questions come in, like after the fact, um, we can forward them to you, and and we'll we'll make sure those get answered and, and push those out to the group as well. Perfect. Yeah. Like I said, I left the email um, address in the chat. So if anything comes up, you know, this weekend, and you have additional questions, just send an email to that address. Uh, we'll, we'll take a look at it. Usually it takes about, you know, 24 to 48 hours turning around for a response. Um, but we'll be happy to take any suggestions or any other questions. And, uh, you know, we're really excited for, for this to launch. I know it's a, it's a long time coming and I think it's going to be a huge benefit to y'all and um, really looking forward to it. Paul, thanks for the time, bud. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. Uh, you guys have a, a great day and a wonderful weekend. You too. All right. Yep. Thanks everybody. Everybody have a great day. We'll see you on Monday, hopefully.